Well, good afternoon. Welcome to this video. I hope everybody's day is going well so far. In this video, we're going to take a look at the different types of threshing systems you will find in a modern combine. We'll look at their pros and cons, their differences, and see what's really going on inside these massive machines. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Feeding the world is obviously a monumental task, and it's no easy feat. That being said, technology has made it a little bit easier over the years. One piece of technology that definitely has made it easier is the combine harvester. Now a combine harvester, if you're not familiar with it, is basically a machine that can take any cereal grain crop, so wheat, barley, rye, oats, millet, spelt, canola, corn, milo, flax, whatever you might have, it can take that, it can pull the grain kernels out and say, okay, I want this, let's clean this off, let's keep this. The rest of the plant, chaff, and straw, I don't need that, let's get rid of that. And that's basically what it does. Now, the idea, this concept of a combine harvester separating grain kernels and holding on to them, that concept has never changed. What has changed is the method of how the combines go about doing that. So let's take a look at them. The conventional threshing system has been around since combine harvesters first became a thing. It's also called the straw walker system, and you'll find out why in just a minute. Basically how it works, as the grain comes into the combine, you have a series of cylinders. Some people call them threshing drums. A series of cylinders turned sideways in the machine. You've got the first one, then the second one's behind it, then the third one, however many you have. And these cylinders, as they're turning, they are wrapped around in these little metal knuckles, I guess you could call them, nubby things, and the cylinder is wrapped in these, and each cylinder is encased in a metal grate with holes in it, which is basically like a giant cheese shredder. Cheese shredder? Cheese shredder. Cheese grater. Cheese grater, cheese shredder, whatever you would like to call it. They're encased in those. As the grain passes through each cylinder, each cylinder sits there and uses friction to basically rub the grain kernels out of the plants. The grain then falls through the holes in the grate onto a little collection pan where it then moves back to the sieves. Now sieves are, hmm, let's see, okay, when you were a kid playing in the sandbox, what did you have? You had a little sifter thing. You put some sand in the sifter, the sand would fall through it, and any sticks and large objects in there would get stuck in the sifter, right? That's basically what the sieves are. It's a giant sifter. Typically you have two of them, one that sits on top of the other. That can vary by design. Now the sieves will basically allow the grain to fall through, but other straw particles will not. The grain will be taken away for collection, and the straw will get stuck up in the series of cylinders where the grain was removed. Now at this point, the straw comes out the back of the cylinders, and you have a series of straw racks which basically look like my fingers doing kind of that maneuver and they gently move the straw along and just gently walk it along until it gets to the back of the combine. Now at that point if the straw is not needed for anything else it can be pushed through a chopper and then ejected at speed out the back of the combine. If it is needed later for say baling for livestock straw you can have the chopper off and the straw will gently plop out of the back of the combine into a little row. You can then come back later and either pick it up with a collection wagon, or bale it, or shred it with a forager. I don't know why you would, but you could. This conventional threshing system has been in place for ever since combines were first a thing. In the 1950s, however, somebody by the name of Elof Carlson, you might have heard of him, had the bright idea, now wait a minute. What if, instead of using friction to separate the grain, what if we could use cylindrical force? What do I mean by that? Well, imagine you're at the playground and you have one of those metal carousel things. I don't know what they're called. We're gonna call them metal carousel things. Bad carousel things. All the kids would get on it. You'd have somebody sit there and spin it and you'd hang on for dear life as it tried to sling you off. That's essentially the same idea. Using cylindrical force, what if you could 
quite literally, sling the grain out of the plant. After close to 20 years of testing and some lawsuit struggles with Sperry New Holland, which I won't get into right now, International Harvester brought the first single rotor combine to the market. I specified single rotor because of the lawsuit that I mentioned, but we'll, we might get into that later, we might not. How the rotary combine works is instead of a series of sideways cylinders, you have one really large cylinder running front to back inside the machine. And as the grain is fed into it, the cylinder quite literally slings the grain out. The great piece around it is called the concave on rotary combines. And as the cylinder slings the grain around, the grain goes through the holes and falls down and is taken to the sieves. The straw and large particles are left in the rotor and they will then come out the back of the rotor and be blown by a fan called a cross flow fan on axial flows. I don't know what other brands call it. You would blow it through the chopper and then out the back of the combine. At the sieves, this part doesn't change between combines, the grain falls through the sieves and is taken away for collection and the other bits get caught by the fan and get blown out. Now when the rotary combine came out originally, it blew people's minds. Farmers didn't know how to configure it. They had to be taught because it was totally different than anything they were used to. But the combine blew people's minds. John Deere was completely baffled, according to memoirs. They didn't understand how this combine was just quite literally leaving them behind. The key to the rotary combine's success was the fact that it could get a much cleaner grain quality, a higher grain quality, less cracks, less damage, but less trash. A higher grain quality, at a higher speed, better efficiency, what's not to like? So if the rotary combine is so much better, supposedly, why is a lot of the world still using straw walker combines? Why are a lot of brands still building them and still selling them? Why are some farmers still using them? Around where I live, which is, let's just say North America, North America has, for the most part, gone completely rotary. Around where I live, for example, you will find nothing but rotary combines unless it's a really, really old straw walker. All the new combines around here are rotary. Except for Kloss, they've got kind of their own thing they're doing, but we won't get into that. But why do some people in, for example, Europe, why do they still use straw walker combines? Well, the answer comes quite literally in the name, straw walker. You see, using cylindrical force to thresh the grain, that's great and all. You can get good quality grain that way. The problem is, you kind of pulverize the rest of the plant when you do that. You get the grain out, but in so doing, you essentially shred up the rest of the stalks and the straw that could have been used for other things. Now there are ways around this on a rotary combine. If you know what you're doing, you can slow the rotor down, disable the chopper. There are some things you can do to try and get straw quality to be better coming out the back of the machine. Be careful though, if you do it too much, you're gonna sacrifice grain quality and that's not really what you wanna do on a combine. So rotary combines are notorious for being a pain in the tail to try and bail straw behind. And that's where straw walkers really shine through. Because of the straw racks in behind the cylinders, the straw, which, let's be honest, hasn't been through a lot because the cylinders are not very aggressive, after the grain comes out, they're just gently moved along down the straw racks and then plopped out onto the ground. What this means is that straw walker combines can give you a much, I don't want to say fluffier, but a much nicer quality of straw coming out the back of the machine. Now, yes, that's not entirely what the point of a combine is. The point of a combine is to get the grain out. But if you're a farmer and you have, say, livestock, or you want to make an extra dollar and sell the straw bales, then that's what you want. You want to have a higher quality straw. And that's where straw walkers really have made a name for themselves. They thresh the grain out, but they also give you a nice bed of straw afterwards. So this being said, rotary combines have their advantage and their disadvantage. Straw walkers have their advantage and their disadvantage. Which one should you use? Well, the answer to that is a case by case basis, no pun intended. Farmers just have to pick what's best for their operation. If, say, the size of the combine doesn't matter because 
let's be honest, rotaries are a little bit bigger because they need more room to thresh. If the size of the combine doesn't matter, if the straw doesn't matter, all you want is high efficiency, high speed, and good grain. Then a rotary combine is your best bet. If you say, yes, I want this grain out, but I need there to be good quality straw as well, then a straw walker might be your best bet. If you say, wait, is there a way we can combine the best of both worlds? Well, kind of. There are such a thing as hybrid combines. The first one that I think of is the New Holland CH series, which basically in the front has the cylinders from a conventional combine, and then behind it has New Holland's infamous twin rotor, which is two small rotors side by side. I can't for the life of me figure out why they did this, and in my personal opinion, I don't see the point. If somebody has would like to enlighten me, please do in the comments. I, I frankly don't understand the point of it because the benefit of a straw walker was the straw racks which you've removed and replaced by another thresher which is completely redundant because the cylinders would get most of it and the rotors are better at threshing anyway so you would think you'd put the rotors in the front but they didn't I don't know I I'll be perfectly honest with you, I have no clue what they were doing when they built that combine. Apparently it seems to be working, people are buying it, it seems to be doing a good job. I, I don't know, I really don't know. Somebody please enlighten me, I'm going to have to go read up on this. I have no clue what, what specifically the New Holland CH, but a hybrid combine in general, I, I, don't, I don't understand the point of it. But that being said, that option is there if you would like it. So at the end of the day, it's really just up to the, the farmer and what the farmer needs to decide which combine you should get. I hope you found that informational. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me another video idea in the comments. And I might, I do read the comments. There's not that many of them, but I do read them. And yeah, I just hope you have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great one, and I will see you next time.